The opinions expressed in the following programming are those of the individual DJ and not necessarily reflective of the CKXU Radio Society as a whole. Listener discretion is advised. Are you listening? of the matter is, I don't think you're listening to me at all, and that's a great concern. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. You're listening to 88.3 CKXU-FM. This is The Subject, and I'm your host, Ben Christensen, my co-host. Joining me in studio, Mr. Thomas Stone. Good evening, Lothbridge, Joe, as usual. And uh, another Friday night, so happy Friday to all of you tuning in. A um, few things to point out uh, before we get going with the show. For those of you new to the program, we are an interactive, listener interactive, talk radio program. Each week we pick a topic. And we get to speak about that topic. If you feel the, if you feel so compelled, you can phone in to the program and talk with us on air. We'd be happy to hear from you. Um, if you've got something to say about this week's topic, uh, so we welcome your opinions, and we'd love to hear from you. Uh, if uh, during this program you feel like you'd like to chime in, uh, you can do so by calling our listener line at four zero three three two nine five one eight nine. Or you can send us a text message, and the number to do that is 587-774-2691. Again, 587-774-2691. That's our text line if you want to send us a text message and have something to say about the program. On that note, um, we want to move on here. So... We'll start right away here with this week's What Happened. Uh, two very interesting stories. Uh, the first um, is an Indiana State pizzeria owner uh, telling who told Fox News that it's okay to serve gays in restaurants, but it's a sin if we cater their wedding. Uh, this restaurant owner uh, received a lot of public scrutiny for refusing to cater a gay wedding. And what I find most peculiar about this story is not her religious stance on the matter, but I gotta be I gotta I gotta question this. Who orders pizzas for a wedding reception? Yeah, that's that, that's a bit well, okay, I I will admit that that one is it's Unusual, but hey, it doesn't mean it can't be done. But yes, it is a little bit unusual. Like, I, I understand the low-budget wedding reception concept. But really, pizza for a wedding? For all your guests who are there to sell? Like, yeah, come that's, on, that's, it's a wedding. Celebrate. Yeah. Don't cheap out. This isn't yeah. a tailgate party. It's a wedding. Yeah, that's a little bit... Um I, I well, I wouldn't say that's cliche, but that's just it. P, uh, pizza is, is for you know Wednesday night hockey. <laughs> like I said, this is not. Oh, this is a wedding, not a tailgate party. Yeah. Uh, if if you're going to, uh, like I say, I, I uh, well, I understand that uh, the the idea. Uh, I I want to steer this back for a minute. This woman is out to lunch in her ideologies. I don't care. What kind of business you run? And I don't care if it's a pizzeria uh, or an old folks home or any other service. Point blank, without question, you do not have the legal right to refuse service. 
to anybody based on their orientation. Well, th- that's part of the issue here is that actually Indiana, among other states that I can't list off the top of my head, but actually there's numerous states across the U.S. right now that are passing state-level legislation that is uh, actually, um, th- they're passing legislation to accept uh, discrimination, basically allowing businesses to discriminate. And when I didn't think I would ever see this in my lifetime, but to me, this this is just outrageous because we're we're heading right back. We're heading back in time. I mean, first it was the blacks that fought for rights. Now it's gays. Well, I, I, what pisses me off about this? I mean, did we not learn anything from the anti-homosexual movement in the 1950s? Did we learn nothing from that? I mean, did we learn nothing from Hitler when he eradicated millions of Jews? Did we learn nothing from that? People, yeah. wake up! We are a society who is light years ahead of those earlier generations and yet we cannot be progressive because we can't give up the principles ideologies philosophies and concepts of a past generation a generation which is outdated old timeish and from a very different cultural era of time yeah what I'm saying is, if you are in a, if you are in this generation, Generation X, as they refer to it, and you cannot accept that gay people are around you, go live in a hole. It's the only way you're going to get away from them. Go live in a frickin' hole. Go dig yourself a six, eight foot deep hole. Find a cave. I don't care. Hide yourself from society because you're a disgrace to society. Yeah, this is nothing sort of outrageous in my opinion because this is it's not just Indiana. There's there's been numerous cases come out in the last uh, couple of months actually of uh, f- there's businesses that are refusing to bake cakes for gays and lesbians. There's well, I mean, I mean well, you name it. Well, that business, it's interesting that you brought that up because the business uh who refused to bake cakes uh for a gay wedding is no longer in business. Yeah, people th- that one you know. I, that should show you that this is something that society will not tolerate if well, you there's are a- so arrogant that you cannot put aside your religious view sh- views during the course of business or employment don't work don't run a business. Go hide in the chapel. See, I think that us atheists actually uh, can say that we are, you know, it's like saying you're the bigger man. Uh, you know, we are above this, meaning that, you know, I'm an atheist myself. Do I think that's okay to start burning down churches? No, I don't think that's okay because I support the right of religious people to go to their church worship their God, and do that. I don't agree with with the idea of God, and I certainly wouldn't participate in a worship service, but does that mean that I think that we should go around burning churches down? No. Do I think it's right for me to discriminate against them? No. So why do they feel they have the right, why do religious people feel that they should have the right to discriminate? It's absolutely ridiculous and preposterous, and I don't think we should stand for it as, as a culture and society. Well... It's, it goes back to discrimination laws. A person does not have the right to refuse service of any kind to a person based on gender, religious, bi- religious beliefs, orientation, skin color, just to name a few. Yeah. And if you think, if you are religious and you are so flippin' arrogant to believe that you are going to impose your values on the world and that you can somehow entitle yourself to be above the laws of the land, by the way, which your Bible says you must obey, Yeah. then go live in a hole somewhere because, frankly, I don't want to meet you. I don't want to deal with you. And if I don't, being the nicest guy in the world, then chances are society isn't going to fucking like you either. Well, I like I say I agree with religious freedoms. However, I think that people, 
especially North America as as a whole, um, we don't fully understand uh, what freedom of religion encompasses and its limitations. Freedom of religion does not give you the right to start discrimin- discriminating. It doesn't. Freedom of religion is giving you the freedom to go worship your God in church or in private. Um, that, you know, that, that's, that is freedom of religion. We, you have the freedom to do that. Uh, but that does not mean that you should try to persuade lawmakers to start making laws that says everyone else needs to live according to your standard. Well, freedom of religion entitles you to practice your beliefs. It does not entitle you to force them on everybody else. Exactly. And Simply that's, put. The thing is, that's the thing is, us atheists, we're not trying to go around saying, you must convert to atheism. I mean, we'd love it if you did, but hey, we're not what? trying to at force you. At the end of the day, I'm not threatening to kill you if you don't convert. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not forcing the government to pass a law that says you get to be killed if you don't convert. Yeah. I really don't care. I know who I am. I live my life, and I'm comfortable with it. Yeah. <laughs> so why the hell can't you all just be happy? I mean, God says... Judge not, lest you be judged. Yeah, that, there seems to be a lot of judging going on. Live your laws by the live your life by the laws of the land. Yeah. Whoops, forgot about that one. Uh, and anyhow. that that sort of brings us to our next story for this week's what happened. Uh, some of you listeners may be familiar with Neil deGrasse Tyson, um, who is the host of the popular television series uh, by Seth MacFarlane, The Cosmos. And uh, he has received a lot of backlash over a recent, very truthful statement where he uh, he suggested that the United States should rewrite the Pledge of Allegiance. And this is what he, uh, this was what he wrote on his Twitter, um, and very uh, truthful. He says, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the divided states of America and to the PACs for which it stands, one nation at odds, divisible, with liberty and justice for some. Yeah, my, I, I saw the story today, and I am surprised that he got the backlash that he did, but you know what? I'd like to say... Well done, Neil. Well done. Thank you for telling the bold-faced truth that it seems nobody on this continent wants to recognize. Well, I have the utmost respect for the man, not because of his religious affiliation, not because of his scientific background, but because of his, uh, because of his ability to stand up and represent the truth that nobody wants to hear. And I, I, I personally, I, I don't think, now I'm probably, probably a lot of people are going to disagree with me on this, but I think the pledge is a waste of time. I think that it should be removed. I don't know who thought of it, but I don't, I don't think it is constructive well, in any way. The history of the pledge, it was actually f- created by the religious. Historically, it was actually perpetrated by religious influence. Well, there you go. But that's the thing is that I I don't think that it's constructive to society. I think it's a I think it's wrong of us to make kids stand up in schools every day and say this before school. I think that's ridiculous, preposterous, and well, I it's think it's systemized brainwashing. Yeah. It's teaching children to be patriotic to a nation that has quite literally fallen to pieces and well, is far yeah. beyond repair in its state of brokenness. Well, it seems that, you know, I I, mean, I have a few friends that are Americans, and they they seem to think that a lot of them have, have said, I've suggested before that we get rid of the pledge, and they basically have said that's just absolutely ridiculous. And I think I'm, I'm sitting there going, why is that ridiculous? The pledge is useless. It is nothing. It states that the United States is supposedly a, a unified nation, when it's not. Neil is right. It's not a unified nation, and you can't... America, I hate to say this, cannot say that it stands for justice, because 
a nation that has the highest incarceration rate on the planet cannot say it stands for justice. It well, just cannot. It's a little it's a little bit of a contradiction to have the highest incarceration rate in the world but claim to be the most free country in the world. Well, that's just it. Uh, if you got a lot of people in jail, you ain't a free country. Yeah. You're a, you're a country who imprisons a lot of people and takes away their freedoms. You're not yeah. free. Simply put. Yeah, like I said, I, I, I think that the, I, I read the comments uh, uh, that Neil got in response to this, oh, supposedly saying he should just stick to science instead of politics and things like that. Like I like I say, if, if Neil were to hear this, kudos to you. Thank you for being bold enough to state the truth, even if that's a hard truth to hear. It's the truth. I, I fully agree. Uh, it, we have become such a, North America, in a nutshell, has become such a broken and dysfunctional nation. And kudos to anybody that wants to take a stand, create awareness, and help people in society to wake up and realize how, just how dysfunctional we actually are as a society. On that note, that's uh, this week's What Happened. We're going to take a little break here. Uh, I'll let you know about some of the other great programming and uh, friends here at CKXU. And we will be joining in again in just a moment, so stay tuned. Tune in every Tuesday at 5 to CKXU 88.3 or CKXU.com for Bean Spouts, where you'll hear some of my music and also spouting some nonsense with some friends. The Bean Spouts, planting the seeds of my music taste in the garden of your ears. Get your CKXU Friends Card for great deals and discounts at places around Lethbridge, such as... Receive a 10% discount at the Owl Acoustic Lounge, located at 411 3rd Avenue South, where there's no cover ever. For more details, visit CKXU.com. Hey everybody, welcome back. You're listening to The Subject on 88.3 CKXU-FM. And, uh, again, just a reminder to all our listeners, if you've got something to say about this week's topic, uh, feel free to chime in. Our phone number here in studio, you can always give us a call while we're on the air. Uh, our phone number here is 403-329-5189, and that is our studio line if you want to chime in and have something to say. Otherwise, uh, you can also send us a text message uh, to our feed here, and the number for that is 587-774-2699. Nine, one. If you've got something to say, send us a text, pick up the phone, give us a call, or you can send us a tweet on Twitter by finding us at the subject CKXU. Without further ado, we move into this week's topic, and uh, we touched on it a little bit during the What Happened segment of the show this week. On the subject, we're talking about human rights and civil liberties. And we need to start by defining what is the difference between a human right and a civil liberty, because there is a distinct difference. Uh, Thomas, do you know the difference? Well, I, I sort of put them in the same category. I mean, I, I think that they're sort of different labels for the same thing in the end. Um, I mean, I guess we, I, I say the only real, from my perspective, I mean, you'll probably have a different perspective on this, but um, I think it really, civil rights and human rights, civil liberties, I, I, I think it's Part of it is where they come from, how do we get them, and things like that. But, I mean, I mean, you give your explanation. <laughs> so, to clarify the difference, a human right is something that is guaranteed to everybody under constitutional law. So, to enlighten you as to what a human right would be, uh, an example would be Section 7 of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, which is... 
that everybody has the right to life, liberty, and security of the person. And it sounds like we've got a caller here. We're going to take the call. Hey, you're on the air with CKXU and the subject. Hi, what is the subject? Uh, this week is Civil Liberties and Human Rights. Humanoid. Yes, sir. So it'd be like maybe Star Trek Next Generation Data. Probably not. Huh? <laughs> human Rights. Human Rights, eh? Yes, sir. Well, I have human rights. That is That you do. Everybody has them. And uh, I'm just happy to have human rights because if I wasn't born and didn't have human rights, then, you know, who would, you know, yeah, Absolutely. I have human rights. And uh, I was born disabled. You know who I am. And I'm not going to say who, but you know who I am. Yeah, it's and... Um, Definitely, especially in cases of persons with uh, dis disabilities um, of any kind, one really has to be considerate of those rights because there is no doubt a lot of discrimination that takes place against persons with disabilities, um, and so I fully agree with you. Yes, and uh, I agree because I don't like that. And there's a lot of people in the city that know that I don't like that. Anyway, yeah. So, um, yep, I do have human rights, and my rights are to stand up to people. If I don't like something, I'll stand up, so we yeah. all have them. And that is exactly what everybody should be doing, is standing up for their rights. Um, we got to get going here. We'd like to thank you for calling in. You're welcome. Take care. You too. And that is a getting back to what we were discussing there. Uh, we'd like to thank our caller there. Uh, we didn't get your name, but that's okay. Uh, it sounds like you wanted to remain anonymous, and that is just fine with us here at the subject. Well, I, I think that um, he brought up a interesting point, and one that does get glossed over quite a bit. Uh, persons um, with disabilities of any kind, um, I hate to say it, but receive quite a lot of discrimination from many sources, and we're not trying to say that anyone is above somebody else as far as more rights than another person, but I, I think that we need to acknowledge uh, that you know we all have uh, equality under the law, and well, that's well, something that's not happening. That's very clearly outlined in Section 15 of the Canadian Charter of Rights, which is that every person is guaranteed the right to equal benefit and protection under laws. And what that means is that everybody who is a human being in this country, man, woman, child, alike, uh, is equally entitled to have basic human rights, as outlined in the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. And that is, in a nutshell, the definition of a human right. Now, getting back to our earlier point here, the difference between what is a human right and what are civil liberties? And civil liberties are outlined within human rights, but serve a very different purpose. Civil liberties is essentially privileges that we as a society, as people, have given to us um, with rules and guidelines that we're expected to follow. And also set of rules and guidelines that outline how we are to be treated with those privileges. Yeah, and I think that, um, sadly, I think in the last, it, it, it's uh, probably in the last, yeah, about 10 years or so, um, it's sad to see that in North America, um, even as George Carl likes to point out, uh, a famous comedian, uh, you know, our our list of rights is at least that is governed by the state is slowly starting to diminish and what i what we're seeing happening is we've got um you know we have the charter of rights at least this is in canada not speaking america um in canada we got the canadian charter of rights and freedoms and then of course we've got um federal uh we got parliament 
who is supposed to be making laws that agree with that charter because a charter is supposed to be a supreme document that's not to be altered and it seems that uh, more and more we're seeing this document um, getting attacked left right and center as far as um, what rights and civil liberties we as citizens actually uh, can enjoy, which it's sad to see, but that, that's sort of what's happening. Now, that said, um, the Canadian Charter of Rights was introduced actually in 1982, and that was amended from the original Canadian Bill of Rights, which was drafted in 1892. Kind of an odd coincidence that the two years actually both uh, have the same numbers, but um, the Canadian... Bill of Rights essentially outlined a, a basis for which was used to establish the Canadian Charter of Rights in 1982. And before that Charter of Rights, there was a lot of very questionable civil liberties and human rights issues going on uh, that led to legislators wanting to impose this new charter, this new bill, so that we could better define what our rights are as citizens of this country. And in a, again, summarizing, two of the most important, uh, in my opinion, uh, that protect us, because let's face it, we would not have a radio show here if this were not in place, is the freedom of expression under which, the Charter. Yeah, which sadly has been attacked um uh in i would say the last uh, more so the last 5 years but definitely the last decade uh, itself um the freedom of expression has been horrendously attacked which i think is quite sad for uh well, north america it, it hasn't been attacked head on it's been gradually and strategically suppressed uh with the implementation of new laws and legislations uh that are designed to creatively restrict freedom of expression. And what I mean by that is, uh, a great example is the recent controversy in Tabor, Alberta. Yeah. Um, with that, people are up in arms because they have quite blatantly drafted a bylaw that prohibits people from expressing themselves. And so there is grounds, no doubt, for a constitutional challenge there. Because that bylaw, while... The town may stand behind it and justify it and say that they've analyzed the constitutionality of it. There's no way they could have because if I want to swear, I should be allowed to swear. Yeah. It's that goes into my rights of free speech. Yeah. It, I can say whatever I want without restriction. And so long as it does not promote some form of illegal behavior. Yeah, and I think that that's, um, you know, it's a lot of people. I know, I know personally a few people who actually would support the Tabor bylaw, and I, they're from a generation that's. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying I don't have respect for my elders, but within reason, because I think that uh, society has to evolve, and I think that although our grandparents would think that some of our language is offensive, I would say, you know what, that's your opinion from your generation. Things do change, and you know what, just, well, be just because I don't like someone else's language, you know what, it's my right to be offended, but it's also their right to speak their mind. Uh, and I agree with you to an extent um, that definitely one has the right to say whatever they want. If they want to swear, they, they are certainly welcome to swear. If somebody takes offense to that, yeah, you have that right, but at the same time, there has to be a happy medium. We don't want to, we don't want to, uh, I guess, create a source of tension with any particular person, so there has to be a balance. And One of the biggest piss-offs for me, one of my biggest pet peeves has to be organizations of a specific type that hide under the protection of the charter. 
Yeah. And that goes, their, their argument is, well, we're protected under Section 29 of the Charter. And to an extent, you are. Uh, for those of you who are wondering what I'm talking about, I'm talking about religious organizations. Because they're tax-exempt, you have a tax-exempt, you have tax-exempt status. You don't pay taxes. Everyone else does. To me... As a religion, if you want to have a say, you have to pay some freaking tax. Because you know. we're all paying the salaries of the decision makers that you keep lobbying free of charge. Yeah. That's actually, a, that's actually a famous quote by Ventura, Jesse Ventura, and I agree with him completely. It's, it's religious welfare in a sense. Well, not only is it religious welfare, but... Far too many organizations are hiding under the guise of, well, this infringe for you to say that I can't say this infringes on my right to religion, uh, practice religion. We have to define this, um, which we'll do after we take another break here. Um, we want to talk a little bit more about that, um, but we're going to take our, our, a brief musical break here. Um, today we're going to introduce you to an artist called... B T S E S C M. I, I don't know how you pronounce that. I haven't got a freaking <laughs> clue what the deal is with that. But uh, this week's song is called Solar Plexus. So a little different from our typical electronic vibes, uh, but we think you'll like it. Stay tuned to the program. We'll be back in just a moment here on 88.3 CKXU with the subject.
black as rain I disagree Counting seconds In silence Time is sweet Hello, everybody. Welcome back. You're listening to The Subject on 88.3 CKXU. I'm your host, Ben Christensen, and with me is my co-host, Mr. Thomas Stone. Before the break, we were talking a little bit about uh, human rights and civil liberties, the difference, and um, we got into a bit of a chat about uh, religious organizations and how they seem to abuse some level of protection of the Charter as a license to do no wrong and uh, I want to touch on that just a little bit more. Uh, My opening thought I guess when it comes to this particular um, issue as far as religion its right to expression things like that um, I think that how do I put this Um, sorry I lost my thought go ahead (laughs) As as I was saying, is uh, religious organizations are particularly famous for a double standard in this regard. Um, and what I mean by that, I find myself very frustrated watching religious organizations say the most ignorant, distasteful, and sometimes flat-out discriminatory things against other parties such as gays, such as abortion, uh, such as you know, groups like that, that don't fit into their agenda, that don't fit in with their lifestyle, their beliefs. And when those groups fight back and say, well, we were unduly discriminated, religion has to come back every time and say, well, Section 29 of the Charter, freedom of religion, freedom of expression. Actually, yeah, this was my thought, actually. I, I just remembered. I think that it's fair to say that... Section 29 actually needs to be challenged in the Supreme Court because the fact of the matter is, um, since uh, Miss Beverly McLaughlin, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Canada since 2000, uh, since she has been uh, in office, uh, as far as I know, Section 29 has not been challenged as far as its validity. And quite frankly, I think it, it needs to be challenged because I don't think when you look at the charter and the nature of the charter, what's, what it's there for, what it's intended to do, Section 29 does not Well, it doesn't section, align. Section 29 of the charter, um, there is a reason that it's farther down the totem pole than Section 15, and that is because the way government laws are written, every section... Row by row, starting with Section 1 all the way to, say, Section 105, whatever length it might be, each section of that law is supersedery to, or supersedes, apologies, wrong use of words there, uh, but every single one of those sections, the higher it is in the numeric order, has a certain value of precedence or supersedes the lower numbers in that same bill. So while the religious want to hide under Section 29, Section 15, no doubt, supersedes it. And Section 1 supersedes that. Right, Bob, I need you to clarify those sections for us. because Section I'm 15, the right to freedom of protection and equal benefit under law. And Section 1 being freedom of assembly. Section 2 being freedom of expression. And those three sections are all precedent to Section 29. And Section 29 was drafted under the consideration that those other three sections would be considered when Section 29 was drafted. Unfortunately, Little birdies in the religious community have found ways to weasel their way out of that and say, well, 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 we're a religion and we have the right to 
under this section, section 29, but we also have freedom of expression. Most certainly you do. But you do not have the right to engage in hate speech. Oh, yes, big time. Which <coughs> is a criminal offense. Yeah. Any materials, be it verbalized, promoted, printed, distributed, or otherwise shared, that promotes hate against a specific group of persons or people is hate speech. And that is anything that is prohibited by criminal law is not protected under charter rights. And unless those charter rights have been breached by some form of investigation alluding to the allegations of the crime. And, and the thing is, it's not like we have nothing to base this off of because we were both raised in separate denominations, separate faiths. I was raised in a Christian faith. You were raised in Mormon. We have since denounced both. And I can say with confidence that there is hate speech that is being perpetuated from the pulpit. If you are, if you are saying, if you advocate that gays and lesbians or the LGBT community as a whole should not have the legal right to marry because it disagrees with your religion, that is advocating hatred and discrimination against another group, and that is against the criminal code. And to perpetrate discrimination against another group of people is not protected under the Charter. You can't say that your promo promotion of hate speech against another group of people is protected. It's simply no, not yeah, protected. It's, it's not protected at all. And the thing is yeah. that a lot of people of religious, like I say, we're not trying to bash them, but, you know, the problem is there's a lot of far-right-wing individuals, such as Pat Robertson, for example, who is a major televangelist. I think the guy is a bigot. And he is promoting uh, acts yeah. of violence and outright discrimination against the LGBT community. Yeah. Now we need to uh, we need to move on here because we are running short on time. But um, another point I want to raise here, and what what I want to illustrate here is how human rights and civil liberties seem to be changing. Where yes. fifty years ago they had the Bill of Rights, society. You know, understood those rights, was educated on those rights, and utilized those rights in situations where they had the right to do so, we now live in a generation where human rights and civil liberties are not being taught to people, and most people can't even reference or quote a single section of the Canadian Charter of Rights. Well, I... I now, in all fairness, I myself, I am aware of my basic rights. I don't have, you know, I couldn't tell you all the sections of the Charter of Rights, but I, I do know. I, I think the general public knows their basic rights, but I actually have found that a lot of people are even uh, very uneducated as far as just the extent of your individual rights as a person and uh, especially, you know, in legal matters— People are so unaware of what rights they have, and I think that that's and, and sad. you know what it's be because we're oblivious to what rights we have that uh, slowly, strategically, and gradually those rights are being taken away from us, and we don't even know it. Yeah. If if you want a taboo, current example of that uh, the the very controversial Bill C fifty one, which just passed Senate approval, is extremely, extremely distasteful and does not consider 
human rights and civil liberties. Well, yeah, even Canada's uh, privacy um, commissioner, I forget his name, but uh, he's actually come out and said that this it's completely reckless and uh, infringes upon uh, you know, basic rights to privacy and freedom of expression. And what I find most appalling about that, it gives CSIS the right to investigate anybody they want without the authority and cooperation of the RCMP. It's essentially authorizing CSIS to become Canada's secret police. And if you're wondering what kind of a country would have a secret police... Let's not forget Germany. Yeah. Or Russia. Again, if we can't figure out how to learn from history, we're basically doomed. Well, and the thing that bugs me the most is a lot of people I've heard are in favor of this bill because, oh, well, we need greater security. We need to give police more power to crack down on sexual crimes of varying natures. Well, you know what? I'm sorry. I have to say this. Uh, The primary basis for it is the whole anti-terrorism thing. Yes. And, you know, I'm not going to get political here, but people, Lethbridge, Canada, listeners, wake up and smell the Java for a minute. When was the last time in the history of this country where there was a terrorist event so catastrophic that it begged the need for new legislation. I cannot recall one, and I doubt anybody, and I put anybody to the challenge to find me one because it simply does not exist. Yeah, and and this is, you know, people say, you know, we have freedom in this country. No, our freedom is not what it used to be. You know, half a century if you don't ago. believe that we don't have the same freedom to stay in nineteen in the nineteen fifties, nineteen sixties, nineteen seventies, even part of the eighties, before the bill of the Canadian Charter of Rights, a person who was under surveillance, who was required who who the police wanted to tap their phone lines and put them under surveillance, they were legally required to have a warrant to serve that warrant, to notify the party that they were under surveillance or that they had their phones tapped so that so as to not infringe on the rights to privacy. Yeah. Nowadays, anybody can tap into your cell phone, your computer, your laptop, your desktop, your tablets, your cell phones, your iPods, your MP3 players, and any other electronic device you bloody carry with you, and they don't need a warrant. So long as they consider it just cause for investigation. So if you think that you have the same rights 50 years ago that you have today, you're sleeping. Well, and the thing is, like I say, what bugs me the most is people want to say, oh, well, we need to give greater police better tools in order to, I mean, they're the greatest justification of terrorism, but I want to move away from that. I mean, they're saying for public safety as a whole, and I'm going, this that's ludicrous, because apparently we've forgotten the uh, fundamental principles of the founding fathers of this country who said to give uh, those who are willing to give up uh, freedom and security sorry i'm i am so misquoting now what was that <laughs> you know better than i do uh, i am so misquoting that one those willing to give up freedom and security for the false sense and belief of protection and national security are not more than a fool Well, actually, he said that uh, they deserve neither. If you're willing to sacrifice your liberties and uh, uh, your 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 liberties to purchase little temporary security, you you don't deserve it. Your Uh, libraries, and and I did not say that. Almost, but you know, but that's the thing is that a lot of people don't even see that we are letting our rights and our freedoms get slowly eroded under this false justification of, oh, well, it gives police more power to combat crime. Police already have enough tools. They already had them years ago, decades ago. It's called, you know what, if the police suspected you of something, they go to the court, they say, here's our evidence, they get a warrant, 
and go through due process. They had enough tools decades ago. They don't need more tools. Exactly. And the only reason that the the only reason that that they are systematically and strategically able to get away with this is because we are allowing it. We're going to take a little break here. When we come back, we'll continue with this discussion. You're listening to the subject on 88.3 CKXU. <laughs> Hi, I'm John. Join me every Wednesday from 5 to 6 p.m. for the Lethbridge Public Library on Air, a radio show here on CKXU 88.3 FM that explores what's available to the public at the Lethbridge Public Library branches. Come on down and take advantage of it all. Get your CKXU Friends card for great deals and discounts at places around Lethbridge, such as... Receive a 10% discount at Andrew Hilton Wine Merchants, located at 212 3rd Avenue South, Lethbridge's best selection of estate wines, artisan spirits, and craft beers. For more details, visit ZKXU.com. And that ad for Andrew Hilton has really got me thinking I could choose a drink. <laughs> I have. Well, it's a Friday night. Might as well. Live it up. Enjoy life. Because you got work on Monday. As usual, a good old Monday drag. <laughs> There's a reason they call it Manic Monday. Welcome back to the show, folks. Uh, for those of you just joining, we're talking about civil liberties and human rights. Uh, before the break, we were talking a little bit about uh, the difference between human rights 50 years ago and human rights today. And there seems to be quite a dynamic contrast. Uh, I mean, yeah, as we were saying before the break, in the 1950s, 1960s, uh, so as to prevent and protect uh, any invasions of privacy, a lawman was obligated to petition the courts for a warrant to serve that warrant on the individual and to notify him that this was going to be happening. Nowadays, they can pretty much watch you without any justifiable means, without any constitutional basis, and all because strategically, little by little, your rights have been whittled away. And that's what we're trying to make you aware of is that while you think that everything is fine, people have this idea in their mind that, well, if you're not doing anything wrong, then you've got nothing to hide. That I certainly haven't done anything wrong. I have nothing to hide, but I still believe that I am entitled as a citizen in a country with protected rights to my privacy. And nobody's yes. going to take that right away from me. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. That's that's so That's so important to mention. That's one of my biggest pet peeves of people that I hear that try to justify the of uh, the invasion of our privacy and taking away our rights you know that that is a pet peeve for me when I when I when I hear that oh well if you've got nothing to hide what's the big deal it's not about something to hide it's the fact that we all have a fundamental right to privacy that should only be invaded if there's sufficient grounds to believe that we have committed something against somebody else. And that is the only well, time I, I should I have invaded. to ask the question, what is the point of having a Freedom of Information and Privacy Act or a Freedom of Information and Protection Act if we don't give a damn about our privacy? Why don't we let the government take that away from us and see how comfortable we are then when an employer is now lawfully allowed to pry into your personal sex life and talk about it at work or well, an educational facility is allowed to pry into your family history and refuse you uh, refuse you academic access because you come from a low-income family. How are you going to feel then? Well, you know, here's an example. I know we, we've talked about this uh, before. Uh, you know, the way that the laws are going in in North America and 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 but specifically Canada as a whole, if you want to say that oh well if you've got nothing to hide okay so if if a law were passed that says that one has to mount security cameras in their bedroom so that they can post their sex lives for on the internet for all to see so that to make sure that you're not raping somebody, we would all say that's just absolutely preposterous. But that's the thing if you've got nothing to hide then you know why? Why would we argue against that? That's the point. We would argue against that because that's just preposterous. But that's the issue. If even we though we don't, even though we have nothing to hide in our private, intimate lives, there has to be a boundary, and that boundary is 
you want some privacy. You don't want the world having access to your life, sex 24-7. Yeah. Uh, that, you know, people say that that's making a grandstanding example. I don't think it is because that is how far carried away it will get if we, if we don't come to our senses. If we don't learn to respect our civil liberties and our human rights as granted under the Constitution, we will not have any left. Yeah. It'll be too late. And if you don't think that that is true, look back at history for a moment. Look back at communist Russia when the communist government slowly and strategically took over control by implementing new government programs and government strategies which secretly revoked certain rights and we were oblivious and before you knew it communist russia was a dictatorship communist germany under the hitler regime hitler same strategy implementing new government programs and government legislatures uh legislation, Leg legislations legislations new social programs supposedly all of these things drafted by the Hitler government and strategically created and crafted for the sole purpose of depriving people in Germany of their basic human rights so that Hitler had a full dictatorship and before anybody could challenge it, by the time anybody figured things out, it was too damn late. Hitler had a dictatorship. He was untouchable. And the same thing history is repeating itself we're here it's here now it's here in canada it's here in north america the leaders of our country are doing the exact same thing that led to world war ii and we're letting them wake up canada you know and one one of the things that i've heard from a lot of my own friends they say oh well if if you think it's so bad here you know you should check out other countries and i'm going you know what it's not just me that says that it's getting worse there's a lot of famous people out there such as john lennon uh michael jackson who spoke out on these things and it seems as though we are dismissing what they had to say, because go and go, you know go and Google the, the, it. The people in Africa right now have more rights than we do, folks, because they've got access to drinking water. They've got access to plenty of government aid coming from North American sources. They have more access and more rights than we do. And we're too flippin' blind to see it because of the old adage of God bless America, greatest country. In it's bullcrap. Total, complete bullcrap. And the people who are trying to stand up for the people who are trying to help you, the people who stand up, take a stand, speak out, let you know what the hell is really happening, are subjected to criticism and ridicule and embarrassment and shut down by the very same people who are puppeteering this egregious abuse of our rights. On that note, I want to leave you with one final quote from a very well-known man who is an advocate for human rights. You might know him in history as Mahatma Gandhi and he very famously said many people especially ignorant people want to punish you for speaking the truth for being correct and for being you never apologize for being correct or being years ahead of your time if you're right and you know it speak your mind even if you are a minority of one the truth is still the truth. Yeah, and that's why I, I give Neil Tyson uh, uh, especially great props to the guy because he is bold enough to state the truth, the fact that North America is not what it used to be. Quite simple. On that note, we'd like to thank you for tuning in. We've reached the end of our program. Make sure you tune in next week, Friday nights, 7 p.m., Right here on 88.3 CKXU. And just remember, if you missed an episode, you can check us out. We have all of our episodes uploaded here on our on our YouTube account. You can find that by going to YouTube and looking up the subject CKXU. Or you can find us on Twitter at the subject CKXU. 
or by using hashtag more than talk radio. That is all for this week, folks. Happy Friday. Thanks for tuning in. We will talk to you all next week.